Okay, what we're going to do today is dimensional analysis, all right? So we're going to set these dimensional analysis problems up just like we did for our metric conversions. What we're, it, all it is is a way to solve mathematical problems involving measurements, all right? So what you're trying to do, just like we did in metrics, you're trying to get rid of the unit given and then convert to a new unit, okay? That is the goal. So... Basically, we're trying to find the quantity sought. So what is the unit that we're solving for? In order to do that, we're going to start with our given, use conversion factors in order to get to the new unit, okay? The one we're trying to solve for. For example, here's a simple one we'll start with. How many quarters are in $12? So just like before, okay, just like we did when we did our metrics, we're going to start with our given always. So write down your given. We have $12. You're going to set up your conversion factor just like before. The unit that is on top, we have to put that unit on the bottom so that it will cancel. So dollars is on top, dollars will go on the bottom. What unit are we trying to solve for? Quarters. So we can put quarters on top. Dollars will cancel. That was our goal. We're trying to get to the final unit. The final unit that you're trying to solve for should always be the unit on top at the end. Okay? Some of these problems are going to have lots of steps. That doesn't matter. I mean, as many steps as is needed to take, you just do it. Finishing with your final unit that you're trying to solve for. What you do next is set up your conversion factor. And all that is, is like before, two equal parts. So you ask yourself, how many quarters are equal to one dollar? So we have four quarters is equal to one dollar. Okay, it's just an equality statement. Saying what's ever here is equal to here. That allows you to cancel. Now all we do, just like in metrics, that's why I wanted y'all to follow my rules for the metrics because now this is going to be a piece of cake. Now we just multiply across the top. If there was anything on the bottom, then you would divide. So we get 48 quarters. Always make sure you have your unit. Okay? One other thing to think about when we're thinking about sig figs. We always count our sig figs from our given, okay? You never look at the sig figs and conversion factors because those are just equal, they're not measurements, okay? Sig figs were all based on measurements, okay? Measured values. So you always do your sig figs based on the given, okay? Any questions on that example? That's really all for the notes, okay? Now we're just going to practice different examples. And I can give you anything anything to convert, okay? So let's try some together. How many nickels are in $56.32? All right. So what do we always start with? Given. Given. Thank you, Jada. $56.32. Set up your conversion factor. If we have dollars on the top, where's dollars going to go next? On the bottom. Now let's pretend we don't know how many nickels. Okay? Are in a dollar. Let's just pretend. What's another step we could go to first if we didn't know? What's smaller than dollars but not as small as a nickel? Quarters, sure, we just did that. Let's go to quarters. Just to show you how this works, so dollars can cancel. Now we put our equal parts. We know four quarters is equal to one dollar. Well, we're still not at our nickels yet, so we gotta go again. Quarters was on the top, where's quarters gonna go next? On the bottom. Okay. Now do we know how many nickels are in a quarter? We should. How many? Five nickels is in one quarter. 
So remember, these are two equal parts. So we're not saying, oh, well, I used four quarters over there, so four down here. No. Okay? You just use the unit. Now you look at your equal parts. Whatever's on top must equal what's on the bottom. Okay? So now we multiply across the top. If we're rounding to make sense, since we're talking about, you would just chop off that point four, round down, and nickel. Four, six, eight, two. Any questions on that one? All right, next one. How many seconds are in 3.23 years? So, once again, we're going to start with our given. 3.23 years. Okay, years was on top, so where is it going to go next? On the bottom. Do you know how many seconds are in a year? I don't. What do you think we should go to next then? Days. days. Very good, days. Now, I want to tell you, don't go to months. Never go from years to months. The reason why makes sense 12 months in one year. But then when you're trying to step down from months to days, right, there, we don't have an equal number of days per month. So always go from years to day. So 365 days is one year. So I'm not worrying about the number of days in this year, okay? Just look at each part at a time. Yes. Would you need to add 0.25 of the days? Because technically for... You could. Um, I'm not going to be that specific about it, but you definitely could. It would be probably more correct. But um, I'll just let people be okay with 300 stuff. All right, so we got days to years. So it's another conversion factor because we're not to seconds yet. What's going to go on the bottom next? Days. What's going to go on the top? What do you think we should go to next? Hour. Sure. Let's go to hour. So we know 24 hours is in one day. Okay, so keep in mind, I'm never worrying about the previous numbers. All right, worry about each conversion factor. Make sure they're equal. Days cancels. We're at hour. All right, hours comes to the bottom now. What should I go to next? Minutes. 60 minutes is in one hour. Hours cancels. Okay, one more. Minute goes to the bottom now, so it cancels. And now I finally get to my seconds. 60 seconds is in one minute. Once again, it all worked out. These are all on the top, so we're just going to multiply. 3.23 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60. And you get a lot of them, right? So I'm going to put in scientific notation. Three sig figs, three sig figs, 1.02 times 10 to the eighth. What's my final unit? Seconds. Okay, so that's what didn't cancel. That's the last unit on the top. Everyone get this in their calculator? You probably saw a big long number, right? Just move your decimal. Should have had to move it eight times. Any questions on that one? Okay, next one. How many centimeters are in 2.5 miles? All right. So, what are we going to start with? Are given. Very good. 2.5 miles. What was given to us? Now, see here, I put the conversion factor for you from miles to kilometers. I will give you any conversion factors that you need other than the metrics. Okay? Metrics you have to know. But anything in the English 
units, anything else, right, other than metrics, I will always give you. So you don't have to worry about memorizing all these other conversions. Okay, I will give it, I will provide it for you. This you have to know. Okay, but all these other ones, I'll, I'll tell you what they are. Okay, we have mile on top. Where's mile going to go next? On the bottom. We're going to go to kilometers because, well, that's what Ms. Nair provided, so I'm going to do that. All right, it tells me one mile. One mile is equal to 1.61 kilometers. Miles cancels. I got kilometers, though. Well, Hey, I'm a master at metric conversions now, so I know how to do that. So, let's do it. Kilometers is going to go where? Bottom. What am I going to put on the top? Very good. We have to stop at our base. Good job. All right, we can't go to centimeters straight yet. So, we're going to stop. What's larger? Kilometers. So, where's my one go? With kilometers. Good. How many meters are in a kilometer? 1,000. Good. All right. One last step. Meters to the bottom. Centimeter to the top. Where's my, I mean, where's my one going to go? On the bottom. Meters bigger. So we put a one with our meter. How many centimeters are in a meter? 100. All right. Once again, multiply across the top. I know we're going to get somewhere we're dividing. But these are all fun. So multiply. And how many sig pigs do we need? Two. So we get 4.0 times 10 to the fifth centimeters. How about that? Not too bad, huh? Y'all feel good? All right, now let's do a few more challenging ones here. All right. Okay, so here we go. Convert. I know these are really small up here, but these are all the units that you'll have to might use for this page, okay? In your notes, hopefully you can read them. Otherwise, we'll read them out loud up here. All right, convert 5.93 centimeters cubed to meters cubed. All right, so first we're going to write down our given. 5.93 centimeters cubed. So that my conversion factor. Hmm. Let's see. What's going to go on the bottom? Centimeters cubed. Okay. What's going to go on the top? Meters cubed. Okay. Let's see. What's bigger? Meter. How many centimeters? Here's where I'm not quite sure what to do, right? I know centimeters to meter. Do I know centimeters cubed to meters cubed? No, we don't, right? Because that's a cubic measurement, right? Not just a one dimension. So this is what I have to do. So watch closely. If I know 100 centimeters is in one meter, everyone agree with that? But now, can I solve my problem? No, because I've only really centimeters cubed is the same thing as centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. Agreed? So how many centimeters have I canceled? Just one. I've only canceled one centimeter. So do you think I can just solve it right like that? No, right? My final unit would be centimeter squared times meter. So what do you think I have to do now? I have to do the same thing again. Everyone with me? But I can't flip flop. I gotta keep my centimeters on the bottom so that I can't fill out another centimeter. 
One more time, right? I got one more centimeter to cancel. And there, I've canceled my third centimeter. So now, instead of just dividing by 100 one time, I have to divide by 100 three times. That makes sense? It's a cubic, so I have to do it three, the same thing, three times. So we'll do 5.93. Every time you see something on the bottom, you push divide again. Okay, divide by 100. Divide by 100. Divide by 100. You should get 5.93 times 10 to the negative six meters cubed. Does that make sense to everyone? So if you have a square unit and you don't directly know what the conversion is, if you need to do it out like this, you have to do it that many times to cancel out the unit that many times. Y'all good on that one? Remember how to do that. All right. Now, we're going to change things up a little bit. All right. All the ones we've done so far are just one dimension. We've only changed one dimension. Y'all feel good on the one dimension? Whatever your unit is on top, right? You have to put it on the bottom next. Cancel it. Keep going. Keep doing that. Now, I want to know how fast is 50 miles per hour in kilometers per second. So now I'm not only changing my distance, right? From miles to kilometer, I'm also changing hours to seconds. All right, setting up this problem is the most important, okay? If you don't set it up right, you're not gonna get it right. So let me show you, anytime you say per or in, or you see units divided by, the way you have to write it is 50 miles per hour. Okay, you cannot put MPH on the top. You will not cancel out your units correctly and therefore you won't be multiplying and dividing correctly. So anytime you're reading the problem and it says per or in or any other words that mean divided by or a rate, you could say, make sure that second part goes on the bottom. All right, now what we're gonna do, right? We gotta change two things. We gotta change miles to kilometers. We have to change hours to seconds. So what I want you to do, forget about the hours for now, okay? Just do the miles first, like we've already done. This mask is going do the miles like we've already done. Okay, so miles is on top. Where's miles gonna go next? On the bottom. What am I gonna put on the top? Kilometer. Miles canceled. Now I look at my handy chart. I think that says 0.621 miles is equal to one kilometer. Okay, so like I said before, that's gonna be given to you. Don't stress about memorizing anything on that table. I will give you what you need. Okay, do we have kilometers? We have kilometers on top, right? That's what we need on the top. Now, we gotta worry about our hours. So, we got kilometers where we need it. We're done worrying about the top. Now we gotta worry about the bottom. All right, if we're starting with hour on the bottom, where do you think my hour needs to go next so that it can cancel? On the top. So now it's kind of backwards. Hour started at the bottom. So in order to cancel my hour, hour now must go on the top. Y'all with me? That's the, big, that's the only really change. Okay, whatever's on the bottom must go on the top now. Okay, now. Do we know how many seconds? We need to get to seconds. You know how many seconds are in an hour? Y'all want to go to minutes first. Let's do minutes just to practice. So hours cancels. Now I fill in my conversion factor just like we've done. Nothing's changing. One hour is 60 minutes. 
All right, set up one more because we're not to seconds yet. If minutes is on the bottom, where should minutes go next? On the top. Minutes cancels. Now I can go to seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. Okay, great. Our right, seconds are my units how I want them to solve. I'm trying to solve kilometer per over seconds. All right? So same as before, multiply across the top, then divide by anything on the bottom. If it makes more sense to you, you can also just do it like this. 50, that's multiplied everything on the top. And then I multiply everything by the bottom. Some people like doing it this better, so I'm just showing you either way. Multiply everything on the top and bottom. Write that number down. Then divide. If you like that better, do that. All right, otherwise, do 50 divided by 0.621 divided by 60 divided by 60. You should get point. Zero, two, two, four kilometers per second. All right, if we're thinking about sig figs, how many sig figs can our answer have? Just one. So you could either put it as 0 0.02, that's one sig fig, or you could put two times 10 to the negative second kilometers per second. Any questions on that one? So anytime you say per or in, make sure you put that second unit on the, that second unit on the bottom. All right, let's do one more together, and then I'm going to let you do three on your own to practice. All right, I'm traveling at 65 miles per hour. How many feet can you travel in 22 minutes? Okay, so I'm looking for one final dimension. How many feet? All right, that's what I'm trying to find. So, let's set this up. Make sure we set it up correctly. Where's my 65 miles going to go? On the top. What am I going to put on the bottom? One hour. The other thing I will mention here, think it'll save you a lot of grief when you're working these problems. Okay, think about what unit you're trying to solve for. I'm trying to solve for feet. All right, a length measurement. Whatever unit you are trying to solve for, you want to start with that one on the top. Because technically, this is also the same thing as saying in one hour, I went 65 miles, right? So if I'm trying to solve for a time value, then I would want to start this way, all right? So pay attention to what you're trying to solve for. Here I'm solving for feet, so I want my distance measurement to be on the top. If I was solving for time, I would Flip it. It will just help me in the end, okay? All right, so here we are, 65 miles per one hour. Now, what do I need to change my miles into? What unit do I need to get miles to? Feet, okay? Well, let's do that. Pretend the hour isn't even there yet. Let's get miles to feet. All right, so where's miles going to go next? On the bottom. And we do have a conversion to get us there in one step. Okay, so we can go straight to feet. And then we plug in a number, 5,280 feet per one mile. If I solved right now, I would have feet per hour. Right? What do you think I need to change my hour to? Minutes. I need to get feet per minute. Okay, so let's do it. Where's my hour going to go next? On the top, so that it cancels. All right, hours canceled. What am I going to go to next? Minutes. I'm 
have 60 minutes in one hour. So now, when I solve, I will get feet per minute. So multiply across the top, and I get 5,720. I would never round until you're all the way done with the problem, okay? So this is my speed. This is how many feet I'm going per one minute. But what's the question asking me? How many, how many feet I am going in 22 minutes? So what do you think I'm going to do next? Multiply by my 22. Everyone see why I'm going to multiply? This is feet per one minute. If I want to know how many feet I'm going to go in 22 minutes, then I'm going to, it's that many more times. You can also look at it and say, hey, I need my minutes to cancel. So I therefore I multiply. Minutes cancel. I'm left with just feet. So I get 1, 2, 5, 8, 40 feet. Right? Minutes cancel. So don't answer the problem anymore in feet per minute. Because that's not feet in one minute. Okay, that's feet in 22 minutes. So you're going this many feet. How many say figs? Two. So you would put 1.3 times 10 to the fifth feet. Any questions on that? All right. 